Film, gaming, pop culture, welcome to episode 17 of Everything is Permitted here at Wade's Comic Madness. I'm your host, Julian Brown, alongside my co-host, Matt Reppert. How you doing, man? I am doing great, man. How are you doing? You know, happy to be here. Happy to be here, That's as good. always. <laughs> you know, away out of the house from the kids. <laughs> it, it always feels good. So, I'm just going to get out of the way right now. Yep. This is the Star Wars episode. Yeah. Episode 9 trailer dropped, all sorts of news about The Mandalorian, K2SO, and the Rogue One spinoff. Probably won't get into that stuff until a later show, but it, it's we're going Star Wars. It's going to be fun. I'm not going to do too much rants, because I want to get kind of into the yeah. meat of the show, but uh, a couple of things I want to get off uh, here real quick. Uh, we're going to do a giveaway uh, for this show, because I happen to have an extra digital code for Spider-Man Homecoming. Oh, nice. But... In order to win it, you have to listen to the show, because at a random point during the show, I'm going to do our secret code, or secret word. So, when you hear that word, and I say, this is your secret word, you give it to us, you email saying, this is the secret word, first person to do that, gets the digital code for Sp- Spider-Man Homecoming. Nice, so, nice. Yep, we will be doing that. Also, we are now into the back, uh, the second third of the Great Permitted Rewatch, so... Uh, we've gone through the first Avengers, and Winter Soldier was last night, so now today, which is Sunday, you'll be listening on Tuesday, is Guardians, Guardians 2, and then I believe on Tuesday when you're listening is Avengers Age of Ultron, and then we'll go into the final third of the Great Permitted Rewatch with Ant-Man and Civil War and Black Panther, Ant-Man and, and, and the Wasp, Wasp. Yeah. and then... Boom and boom, Avengers and Avengers, back to back. Yep. Which will be fun. Dude, there's those absolutely insane, crazy, like, 22 film, like, 56-something hour marathons that you can go to in yeah, New York. Yeah, at movie theaters, which yeah. I don't... How would you physically accomplish that? They did it for Infinity War in no, New York, and people, like, people, you had readmittance, so you could leave, and, like, if you're like, okay, I don't care about this movie too much, like, leave... And go get, get food, get sleep, and come back. People <laughs> slept in the theater if they like didn't like one movie, they would just sleep during that movie. Apparently, oh, apparently at the end of the day, after all of this, like people were just like it smelled. It was bad. I would never. No, no, no. Maybe Star Wars. Maybe. I mean, honestly, then. you're. It's it's asking because I think the longest movie I ever sat through was the movie Gettysburg, which was four hours. And it had a, an intermission at the two hour mark. And even that was, and I was a young kid. I was like in middle school, I think, when I saw it. That was pushing it. You're talking like, I think it was like a 59 hour marathon of back to back to back to back to back movies. I mean, as you said, like the, the smell would be freaking terrible. I would puke. Like I would. I would oh, no. It, it would, I mean, it would be disgusting. I just but wouldn't also, want to be with that many people for that many hours. But just, but just two a, and a half days. <laughs> two and a half days, exactly. <laughs> but just, just ima- but just imagine you're watching some movie that you really cared about for some for whatever reason, and two seats over, you hear somebody. <laughs> That's also a it's very like, good. It's point. like, dude, I, I I would hit somebody. I'd yeah. be like, wake the fuck up. This is the this is the good way to do it. You watch a movie a day, or if you can't watch a movie a day, you watch a couple in a day yeah, yeah. and catch up if you have to. Like, this has been fun. It's mm-hmm. been really fun because however many times you re experience, yeah, the like however movies. many times you've seen these movies, you always find something new, or because of what you know from the next movies, mm-hmm. certain scenes have like so much more meaning. Uh, when I was watching Iron Man three, I didn't. I never noticed like when he's sinking to the ground after the Mandarin's blowing the shit out of his mansion. Yeah, like you know that huge uh, bunny that he got for Pepper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that like you could see it, like he looks at it and it's like sinking with him. I thought like I never noticed that before. <laughs> and the weight of um, and just like knowing that everybody basically who's like in Shield, uh, like who's in previous movies like in Thor and you know all of them basically are like Hydra members. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, Hydra members. So it's just like the weight of that, like when they're trying to revive Fury after getting shot and they're like trying to give him like whatever they give to like try and wake people up yeah, yeah. when their heart's stopping. Like, like, oh shit, like that's not what they're giving him. They're giving them, him the the injection so he has a beat a minute. Like this is where they're doing the fake like right now. Mm-hmm. It's just like really cool when you can be like, oh wow, this is like has so much more meaning. Yeah, you yeah. know what happens next. I love that kind of stuff. But uh, like I said... We're into the second third of the Great Permitted Rewatch. We'll be going into the final third next week. So uh, keep watching with us. I've seen Facebook posts. I've seen Instagram posts. It's been a lot of fun yeah, after yeah. this. I'm going to go home and watch Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. Nice, nice. So that'll be fun. Um, any quick rants? 
Um, no, no rants, nothing. I'm I'm currently stuck in a conundrum of what I should buy on Voodoo, but uh, I posted on Facebook. They're having about a that. sale, right? Yeah, they're having they're having a comic book, TV, and movie sale. Which you know, if you're into buying things on Voodoo like I am, because you actually own it, you're not just streaming it. Um, they basically have a deal where any they have a list of stuff you can choose from movies and TV seasons. Any three of them, it's fifteen bucks. That's pretty legit. No, and I mean, and they have some good movies in there that I would love, but I, but I only want to buy TV seasons because movies I can generally get at some point, yeah, you know, cheap. But like, I'm currently I'm gonna get right now. I have the Expanse season three, uh, Happy season two, which if you haven't watched Happy, heard of Happy? Happy is an amazing goddamn show. And right now, my third purchase is what I'm debating because it's either the first season of Twelve Monkeys, which. I never watched the series. I never watched it either, and I saw the movie with uh, Brad Pitt and, and Bruce, Bruce Willis. Willis back in the day in '95. Is when the it movie came out. scared I, the shit out of me. I saw it in theaters. Yeah, me too. That's a, that's how that old was my I dad am. for you. He like he took us to go see Pulp Fiction and Twelve Monkeys. <laughs> yeah, and... but so it's either Twelve Monkeys or the the season, the first season of that show, Deadly Class on Sci Fi, which oh, takes yeah, place the, in yeah, the yeah, '80s. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know so. that too. Um, very quickly, I went to, we can't have a show without mentioning Best Buy in the hope of them <laughs> sponsoring our show one day. Uh, I didn't want to watch the shitty, like, rip of it that I had mm-hmm. for, uh, Thor The Dark World, so okay. I gave in and, like, completed the collection <laughs> and bought it, and in a couple of days, I'm gonna get the steelbook of Ant-Man, because I don't own Ant-Man 1, either, and they still have a few. Yeah, at Best Buy, so I'm gonna grab one of those, too. It's like, I I'm... might as well own every single MCU film, except... The Incredible Hulk. I watch that shit with commercials on TNT on demand because I'm not buying that movie. Oh no, no, no! Absolutely but it's not. in the MCU, so I had to watch it once. Once again, I, I know I asked. That's that's the uh, the Ed Norton. The one, Ed right? Norton. Not which the, is, what about the? Does the Eric Bana one count? No, in the that's MCU? like in its own whatever alternate. Okay. Yeah, that movie is a steaming hot pile of garbage. Oh no! But it is. I think the Ed Norton one, after watching it again, is worse. I actually don't mind the Eric Bono one <laughs> as much. Edward Norton as Bruce Banner was just stupid. No, no. It was he... just dumb. And Liv... Man, Liv Tyler, I love Liv Tyler. She's hot. She's a good actor in some things. Mm-hmm. She's so fucking dull <laughs> in The Incredible Hulk. Like, <laughs> Jennifer Connelly was better in the role. Yeah. Um, the only good thing about that movie is... Um, I always forget his name. Is it John Hurt? Not John Hurt. Who plays Thunderbolt Ross. Oh, I don't. I always remember. I haven't seen that movie in forever. Yeah, yeah. He's he's John Hurt. Is it? Yeah, I think it's John Hurt. Yeah, he's really good in that. Or is it William Hurt? William Hurt. John Hurt. That's like John Hurt is the English guy in V for Vendetta who plays the. Yes, it's William Hurt. Um, All right, let's uh, before we get into the permitted minute, I just want to mention that you've heard his voice already. Uh, He's going to be helping us with our huge Star Wars stuff. Sean Harrigan from the Sin Escape Podcast is here to join us again. Second week in a row, man. Yeah, happy to be back. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. Glad to have you back. Yeah, it's it's good to have. I like it. I like it. (laughs) Regulars. Regulars is always good. I'm I'm looking at you, Rob. Said you couldn't make it today. I wanted to take away your nerd card for something, but you couldn't be here. So, um, Let's get down to it. It is time for... The Permitted Minute. The Permitted Minute. We will go in five, four, <laughs> three, two, one, go. Disney has announced that its streaming service, Disney, Disney Plus, will launch on November 12th at six ninety nine a month. Launching on Disney Plus will be shows previously rumored, including Falcon and the Winter Soldier, WandaVision, and Loki. Marvel's What If will also feature Peggy Carter and what would have happened if she became Captain America. It's a busy news cycle for Disney Plus, staying with the streaming service as it was announced at Star Wars Celebration in Chicago that Alan Tudyk will be reprising the role of K2SO in the Cassian Andor Rogue One spinoff series set before the film. Staying with Star Wars, it's been confirmed by Lucasfilm that the man himself, George Lucas, had a hand in completing Episode Nine. The Hellboy reboot is out, and the reviews are not good. The film sits at 15% on Rotten Tomatoes. Tomatoes, and even by their standards these days, that's abysmal. Also, China is usually a tough audience, but Endgame tickets are crushing Infinity War pre-sales in the country and may set a new record. Hurry up, we're Following the release of the Episode Nine trailer, Disney's Bob Iger confirmed that Star Wars will be taking a hiatus following the rise of Skywalker. Did we make it? Oh, one fucking second. One yes! fucking second. Yes. One second. Well done. I, I clutched it there. You did. I totally clutched clutch. it. That was like good old Brad Lidge back in 08 <laughs> coming in for the save, man. That's a nail-biter there. Yeah, that was well done. That was good. Mm. All right, well... I tried to set us up for failure there, and it didn't work. Yeah, you tried. You tried. I got to make these longer still. (laughs) Still got to make them longer. All right. 
Let's get right into it. Our main segment today, we are going to be breaking down the Star Wars Episode Nine trailer, The Rise of Skywalker. And like I mentioned, Sean Harrigan's here from the Cinescape. He's going to be helping us do that. Um, let's get something off, right, the, like that I think maybe we all agree on here. The title's awful. Yes. Uh, I'm not going to say it's awful. Um, I have... I have a little tidbit of info that I wanted to pass along to you guys. So in doing some research, uh, I found out that in original uh, pre-draft uh, you know, scripts for uh, episode four originally, uh, George actually noted that he was calling Force users Skywalkers. So before they were Jedi or Force users or anything like that, the original term that he's going to use for the Force users are Skywalkers. Huh. So looking at the title and going with that new bit of information, yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean that yeah this movie is about Kylo or Rey is going to be a Skywalker. It could be just George's original uh, titling of you know, the actual term being brought back into prominence so it may, it, you know it's not going to continue luke store the or, you know the original trilogy people um but it is going to continue the f- new force users so that yeah, could be a cool way to look at it if that you know if it holds up it's an interesting thought because skywalker is a cool name and yeah it, it, it's a cool thing for skywalker how how true that's going to end up being i guess remains to be seen i feel like i feel like the voiceover in the trailer yes with luke points at some Skywalker connection. I, the thing is, is that like, yes, it's, it's a neat little, you know, what what he just described with the, the possibly being called Skywalkers or whatever. But we, I think we can all agree that George Lucas has a lot of ideas riling around his head. Not all of them were very good. Like the prequels. Yes. The prequels, (laughs) the original episode three is a good movie. The original script for the original star Wars. I mean, I've, I've read parts of it and it's, pretty awful like moff tarkin i remember at one point like pounds vader in the back like bro style like <laughs> and and vader doesn't have the mask or anything like as i said george lucas had a lot has a lot of good ideas not all of them are good you guys and, like darth vader <laughs> want to see him as a kid yeah and it's like and and but yeah i i still think i mean if even if they go the route of like we're no longer jedi or sith we're skywalkers I honestly might in the theater just go, God damn it. But like, that's actually a recurring theme in the books. Uh, is, 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 unfortunately, they didn't the, keep The entire it that extended way. universe well, that no longer counts? Well, no. I mean, in the fact that during the, um, if you've ever read any of the expanded universe, there was a whole book series, a long book series called uh, The New Jedi Order. And it was basically the next massive war. It was against a alien Vong. race called the Yuuzhan Vong. From the unknown regions, yeah. and a lot of fucking people die. Yeah, Coruscant gets taken over, but Jason Solo, um, Han and Leia's kid, they have twins in the in the books, uh, goes and gets basically captured, and gets captured by a Force user that was kind of with the Vong. I forget his or her name at this point, but um, anyway, he basically gets taught that there is no dark side or light side. There's just the force and how the force is used. And it's a really cool concept for a while until they decide in later books to throw that out the window and Jason Solo becomes a Sith Lord and his sister has to chop his head off. Um, Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. I mean, is anybody <laughs> book has been really out for like 20 years in the universe in anymore? Um, Gina Solo, by the way, my favorite comic book character. I mean, not comic book. Star Wars character of all time. Mm-hmm. Love Gina Solo. I uh, was really hoping that's who Ray would end up being, but it's, it's still possible. They, I mean, they they obviously took elements from the extended oh, universe books into these new yeah. movies. They they you, like you you'd be blind to not see it. Oh, one hundred percent. I just uh, that's a that's an episode for yeah, another absolutely. day. Um, let's get into breaking down the trailer. Uh, Hold we on, all... b- before we do that, yeah, uh, we are in a comic book store currently. Uh, if we went upstairs and got the newest edition of the Darth Vader number 25 comic. Such a good run, by the way. It would reveal to you that just their newest, uh, newest edition has announced that, uh, Palpatine actually is the biological quote unquote father of Anakin Skywalker. Whoa. Impregnating oh, they, they, Shmi via 
the force. The I mean, force. That was that was something that like a lot of fans had theorized. They for did literally years yeah. because so that's canon. Confirmed because canon the comics now. are canon. That's yes, that's fucking crazy. Darth Vader number twenty five. That that the new Darth Vader run has been fantastic. I, I read it when the volumes come out. Uh, that's a big so. Palpatine coming back. Palpatine, they thought it might have been Plagueis. Right. That's. I was actually going to bring that up too. But going off of this, you know, you know, the new comic, um, Palpatine coming back into this film, you know, could obviously pay a lot of dividends if he is. Well, obviously, he definitely is now because that's canon. You know, he's you know, part of the lineage of the quote, you know, the squat Skywalker clan. <laughs> well, so. I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it because <laughs> think about in the prequels, as shit as they are, like h- how much Palpatine, like yeah. basically shapes Anakin and really is his father figure th- besides mm-hmm. Obi Wan throughout the thing. Like that's kind of crazy. Did okay. you ever watch the? Uh... YouTube channel Cinemasins by any yeah, chance. Yeah, Cinemasins. Have you seen them for the prequels? Uh, a long time ago. I have to go back and watch yeah, them. Yeah, go again. back and the watch them. Because it yeah, the... goes on of how you know, Palpatine's whole master plan through the whole thing. And it's just like ripping on. It's like, he had to have anticipated that this was going to happen, but this was well, going to happen. This was, you, <laughs> like, ever, how the hell would he possibly if, know if you ever, If you want to watch a good breakdown of the prequel trilogy, watch, um, oh God, the Red Letter Media, they, the, the Mr. Plinkett yep. character. And like one, probably one of my favorite review quotes ever is that scene from uh, episode three when they're sitting in the theater. With, it's Palpatine and Anakin. Have and you ever like, heard the legend? Yeah, of and then it's like, and the reviewer is just like, you know, I literally think that at this point you could be like, you know, Anakin, like you can prevent pregnant women from dying with the Force, <laughs> the dark side of the Force. And episode Anakin wouldn't three, grasp like, what's going episode on. Episode three is a good movie. Like I think episode three is very good. Like I think the other two it had it had garbage. good elements in it. The, it had it had some good elements, and also I want to do like a quick a quick shout out. By the way, the the trailer for the new I Star Wars. We game. are going to break down the new trailer. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, Go ahead. but I will do a shout out for the new Star Wars single player oh, only game that yes. the trailer for that dropped basically the same day or was it yesterday? It was like an, it was like a little yeah, bit. It was yesterday, yesterday afternoon, in afternoon, I believe. Because yeah, I, I know we're, I'm, I'm kind of getting off topic. No, I want I, I want to I want to just I want to just give a shout out for finally making a goddamn Star Wars game that is single player, not multiplayer, no loot boxes. It's a story based thing, which and I'm looking forward to playing it already. And I have seen nothing about its gameplay. Sorry. Dude, that I I can't wait. I can't wait. It looks so damn good, and we don't have to wait very long. It's like November. Yeah. So so anyway, let's get back no, to the that, let's get back yeah, to the trailer. Was, was cool. It was a like really it. cool trailer. Yeah. It was a really cool. Totally trailer. agree with the non multiplayer too. Yes. Oh, dude, I hate yeah, multiplayer. All right, guys. So I have some images here because we just freshly right before we started recording watched the trailer again. So we'll go through these and do the breakdown. The, the trailer starts with Ray either, and we we will speculate here. On uh, Jakku or on Tatooine. We know that Tatooine is going to be in episode 9. Um, what do you... We, we kind of briefly talked about this opening scene before we started. What do we think is happening here? Sean, you're our guest. I'll start with you with her with the lightsaber and the TIE fighter. Yeah, it's... I mean, there's one of two ways of looking at it. Either whoever is piloting the TIE interceptor is just some random person that she's... Like a you scout. Know, yeah, yeah. You know, going to have to combat. Or that it is actually Kylo... Now, if it's just her and Kylo in some kind of a showdown like that, it kind of, I mean, throw an episode eight out of the out the window because JJ is going to change a lot of shit. <laughs> um, but I kind of still am in the camp of that they're going to be together, not maybe like romantically together, but they're going to wind up on the same side of things. So maybe this is some kind of like a little training scene or something. I mean, that's maybe. definitely a thought that, you know, I've had, you know, after seeing it the first time. So, I mean, it, it could go either way, but yeah, it'll be interesting to find out. But it does look like his tie interceptor. Yeah, after seeing it for a second But time. they don't show who it is in there. So. The yeah. gloves kind the of gloves are pushing up bit. the throttle. The gloves yeah. look like cool. Kylo's gloves. I mean, my, my thought process is it is Kylo. Uh, that basically it's, you know, like my, because I, I was thinking about this for a little while and whoever's piloting the tie, why aren't they just shooting her? Like, because you have a starship that can literally bang, bang, Kylo like a mile up. Yeah, what's no it just going to run her over? Yeah, yeah. Like, like, you're so, like you're going to run her over <laughs> like she's a rabbit on the highway. Like what, you know. Knowing that she has a so lightsaber. My, <laughs> my guess is probably what happens is that he probably did, does shoot her because she's obviously breathing hard like she's been, she's probably been running from him. Like he probably was shooting her. Let me just interrupt you real so, quick because I'm looking at a still image and that is 100% 
it's not that there is a new tie interceptor in the movie. This is this is Kylo's tie fighter, one hundred percent. So that okay. that is Kylo. Mm-hmm. Okay, so go ahead. So all right. So basically, like my feeling is that Kylo was shooting at her. She was running, and you know, and then finally, I like I have a feeling there's going to be that moment when Luke talks to her and says, "Just give it into the Force. Just let it happen." And that's when she ba- he you know he's like it she probably rapey. disables his laser cannons or whatever either through the force or she throws something at him that you know they could easily add into the trail add into the movie later they could just remove it for the trailer just so you don't know and so, you know obviously Kylo is a very angry person so he's like I'm going really? to I didn't kill know that. her yeah I know right <laughs> so that's why like he's like I'm just gonna run her down like I'm just gonna yeah. run her down like he's not he's not thinking he's just focused on her and trying to kill her. And that's when she basically just kind of gives in to the force and like literally jumps over a goddamn TIE fighter that's moving at like how many hundreds of miles an hour I mean, towards her. All all signs in this scene lead to me thinking that she's going to slice the damn thing in half, which would be like one of the coolest Star Wars scenes ever. Yeah. Um, during this uh, breakdown here, during the scene where the fighter's coming at her, she's igniting the lightsaber, we get voiceover of Luke Skywalker. This obviously me unless they just recorded for the trailer, but I I highly doubt that Luke is back in episode nine no. in some way. Force ghost, force it's it's gonna be force something. Ghost. Force ghost. But he's basically talking. telling her, like, you have all the knowledge of a thousand generation of Jedi. We're not gonna get involved as force beings. Mm. This is your fight. What do you make of that if the movie's called like right away the Rise of Skywalker, but he's saying this is your fight? Yeah, it's curious to say the least with the title being so ambiguous and then you know going off of you know how luke went out in episode eight is he actually dead you know what what actually happened to him and how he is you know however he appears in this film uh i I think there's no doubt that he's going to have a very large role when whatever capacity comes back and i think there's also a really good chance that you're going to see Anakin in the same form come back in oh, this movie I would, too. I would love that. Because if you're going to have Palpatine in there, I mean, it only makes sense to wrap up if this is going to be the end of the Skywalker saga as we know it. I mean, you have to really tie everything together. So I, I, I'm picturing I'm picturing Palpatine coming back and be like, you know, Kylo, I'm your great grandfather <laughs> now. Like pretty much. Uh, yeah. Like like come on, man. Like, but uh, Anakin was supposed to show up as a Force ghost in Episode Seven. You, in, in JJ's first film, you think that you think that would have like solved a lot of issues with Kylo if Anakin had just appeared in his room, and been like, "Man, stop, Don't repeat stop my doing mistakes. this shit! Like, it doesn't work out for you. Like, I, I've already been because he's he basically is basing his entire life around being the new Darth Vader. Yeah, if Anakin could just appear at any moment and say, "That's not what you should be doing," but that probably would have saved us all a lot of for problems. saying like. No, like not to meddle in the affairs of the living, and not to meddle like to let people go down their own paths. Well, yeah, I the mean, whole force ghost thing is kind of you know unknown territory on like what the rules are. Yeah, and, especially because like you know Obi because uh, you know Obi Wan and Yoda once they died did not, or Yoda didn't die in Empire yet, but like Obi Wan did not help uh, Luke out when he fought Vader the first time. Lost a hand for it. Like, yeah, but he did. But he, to be the fair, force, Luke. Yeah, exactly. About to say, he did help him destroy he, the Death Star. And he said, use I, I, the he force, gave Luke. him a pointer. He didn't, like, shoot the <laughs> proton torpedo. Uh, <laughs> semantics. He, he didn't people. Yoda lightning the force tree. So, yeah. <laughs> um, the next part of the trailer, we see what looks like an A Wing at uh, nighttime flying over a city. I don't recognize. Uh, I don't recognize this planet. Yeah. We're, we're going to kind it's of probably something we can't really that they drop that we can't really uh, speculate on. We'll skip over. We see Kylo fighting some dudes with his lightsaber uh, in some. Now, in I, I, no, I didn't notice, but can you see the scar in that trailer? Because that might like tell me could... whether or not it happens in current day or like back I with the like Knights the of Ren. I feel like the scar was there, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Uh, I'm even though I don't want to spend too much time speculating on this image. It's a forest, so that could. We were talking about it before the show, like the Endor. Endor theory or yeah. Yavin, even both foresty worlds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here we go. So he's fighting some more people. There's it's fresh actually order. Naboo. Yeah, it's Naboo. No, that's where it is. Hey, <laughs> that's Palpatine's homeworld. <laughs> it's true. Uh, more fighting, more fighting. Uh, I did see a lot of people online as we were waiting for that to go by, um, saying that Kylo like choke slammed or like rock bottom the the one guy in that scene that they thought it was another Knight of Ren. 
Um, oh yeah, that, like I, and looking at close up images, it, it didn't look like that's what that was to me. But I did see a lot of people, you know, speculating about that. Like, did he turn on them? Did they turn on him? You know, who is Palpatine under? You know, like, you know, controlling the Knights of Ren himself. You know, it's this is something that you know we're going to talk about with uh, Ryan Johnson in a little bit. But yeah. that's something that was really, really taken out of the whole trilogy yeah, with, I, with episode eight i always feel like the, the knights of ren were one of those like things that were never explored upon yeah. at all in the movies because it's like in you know in the, the force awakens you see him these these people are with him and they're not brought up at all in right. the last jedi and it's like wait yeah okay kyle like if you had just had kylo the whole time i would have been like all right kylo's powerful enough he took down the entire temple by himself but there were people with him, and so it's like, why? Who were they? Guess I know exactly. Like <laughs> what? Like you're telling me that like after the whole incident with Luke and Kylo, where you know Kylo thinks that Luke is going to kill him, and then you know that whole crap happens. At some point, Kylo runs around, wakes these dudes up, and goes, "Hey, Luke almost killed me. We need to kill everybody else right now." And they were all just totally cool with it. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know what, Kylo? Let's go, man. Let's do it. <laughs> I've been thinking about doing it anyway. <laughs> Speaking of Kylo, uh, the next thing that we see in in the trailer is him putting together the helmet again, like rebranding it, maybe fully embracing the dark side here. That's that that's like his. That's like his. I want to be Vader. Yeah, I want to be like that's Grandpa. His, yeah. 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 Uh, not not much to go off there. You see, He's got a space um, solder out. Yeah, <laughs> we see uh, Finn and Poe, which obviously is the big bromance of the movie. Uh, I know people are shipping the hell out of them. <laughs> I don't. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Finn and Poe. Uh, what looks to be either again, it's either Tatooine or Jakku. I don't think there's any other sand planets in. Uh, I mean, there's only. I mean, how many sand planets could there be in the galaxy? I mean, well, like, true. There's only true. two, I guess. True. Yeah, that's uh, it. An image of our our favorite little droid, BB-8. And then uh, okay, so this is this is a really cool moment. So the Millennium Falcon, you have Chewie and Lando yeah. on the Millennium Falcon. Not only is Lando on the Millennium Falcon, Lando is piloting the Millennium Falcon. And he seems happy. He's like, "Oh man, I got my ship back." If you look close in the background, you can actually see a bottle of Colt Forty Five back there. <laughs> <laughs> um. So the last time you know throughout this movie, it, it, well, I should say the saga, it looks like. Ray was kind of inadvertently handed down the Millennium Falcon. It's kind of you know her right. ship, but now Lando's piloting. How does how do we think Lando is going to come back into well, into the world here? Well, remember in that in Return of the Jedi, he's General Calrissian. He is not just some rogue. Like he is a part. He is an admiral or, or a general in the rebellion at that point. So yeah, he's but, okay, obviously okay, hold so on, connected hold on to the but at, at that point during the rebellion, like they were going to lose the war and they were making anybody and their mother generals. No, I get that. But the thing is though, is that like Lando has a good thing going. Like I'm sure he got a lot of prestige, a lot of, you know, money, a lot of whatever from the empire's fall and the Republic's rise. So it makes, makes perfect sense for him to still be a part of the Republic, which of course they could totally retcon that and say like, Oh, he resigned. As soon as the war was over, and he went off and did his own thing again. Yeah, I think he got sick of being a uh, mining director on Bespin. So no, but I mean, let's face it, else. Lando is a is a hustler. <laughs> like that that is who he is. And in this, he's not wearing like a fancy uniform. He's wearing his like yellow jumpsuit from the Solo movie. Like I think he's back to his smuggling God, ways. I wonder how it smells if he's wearing that. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure the Millennium Falcon or wherever he was. Like, doesn't he have any other clothes? <laughs> he, he had a whole damn closet. He goes back in the Millennium Falcon. Oh, thank God, it's still in here. He's got like a bunch of the same kinds of outfit. <laughs> but do we think he's coming back to fight and help in the effort to take down the oh, yeah. First Order? Yeah, yeah because absolutely. he was. I mean, he's basically the answer to the call put out in Episode Eight yeah. for more help from the rest of the. Yeah, the I, resistance troops. Yeah, I, I could see Lando basically being the head of some little planet or cluster of planets where he's like, yeah, I've I've always thought the First Order was bad and I was doing my part, but the Republic government was like, no, you're not. Like, I could see him, he was essentially helping back Leia's, you know, resistance, rebellion, whatever they called it, whatever they kept calling it at some point, but... Resistance, yeah, yeah. I, I I know they called it the rebellion and the Last Jedi, even though the Republic literally controlled the galaxy, which I I still don't get. But whatever. It wasn't the rebellion until the end of the movie, where like the rebellions. Reformed. Yeah, but remember General Hux right before they blow up the the capital. No, that's a good point. He goes, "This is the last day of the Republic, and the re- we'll crush the rebellion, or whatever." Yeah. So. Well, anyway, uh, speaking of the resistance, rebellion, whatever you want to call them, uh, we sh- we get to the scene where. 
Uh, it looks like a barge, again, either on this Jakku Tatooine planet with Finn, with Poe, and C-3PO. It looks kind of reminiscent of uh, Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of like a barge Java chase there. Thing. Not really much to go off of. This is a, a cool little moment. Uh, you see, I, I'm assuming that these are Leia's hands, and she's holding what either has to be Han or Luke's medal. Yeah, from episode from 4. From A New Hope, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty cool. It's, 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 it's got to be Leia holding Han's yeah. medal. It has to be, yeah. because you need to have that emotional connection, you know, the fact that Han's gone, he's not coming back, and so on and so forth. What do you guys think, J.J. Uh, Abrams, during the, the Episode Nine panel at uh, Star Wars Celebration, specifically said, like, he built this movie around Leia. Like, what do you, what do you think about that? Uh, it goes to show you how loved she was, not only by fans, but everybody working on the franchise today and back then. So, I mean, it's just, you know, an ultimate honor to, you know, give her her final respects the you know the best way that you can so yeah all about it i mean i i feel that like losing carrie fisher was like a tremendous loss for not just nerd culture but just in general and i mean i'm like part of me thinks that like they were going like like as jj abram said they built this movie around her is that carrie fisher was going to have a much larger role in this in this whole new trilogy than, you know, obviously her untimely passing, you know, making the second movie basically kind of meant they had to scramble because I mean, I feel that they were going to do more stuff with her and Ray where she'd be like, yeah, I can use the force when I need to. I want to, I want to segue right into that because the next scene in the trailer is Leia hugging Ray and it, and it looks like her new outfit, not, not the Jack Q outfit. Mm -hmm. I'm really wondering how they pulled it up. Cause they said they were using unused footage, not, not CG at all. Um, but here she is hugging Ray in what looks to be like her version of like, you know, this like pristine white Jedi robes. What I thought was cool about her new costume is it's got a Jedi hood like built no, it doesn't right matter. into it. Um, I thought that was really neat, but yeah, I mean, the scene, um, if everybody watched the trailer, like this looks like, this looks like it could be a forest planet again. I starting to really think that could be yeah. Endor, where the the we'll get to the Death Star bits. Yeah, um, hugging Ray. There, it's either a reunion or a goodbye. What are, what are we thinking there, if anything? Is it too hard to speculate on that? Or yeah, I mean, without any kind of context, yeah. you don't know at what point. Uh, yes, yeah, she may is either seeing her again for the first time or you know, leaving and saying goodbye for the f final time. Yeah. Or any I, I, I'm going to say it's saying goodbye because the movie is going like the movie's going to be a send off to Carrie Fisher. It's her mm -hmm. final movie appearance ever. And that's because it, that that whole hugging scene like that to me, like obviously without context, I'm just speculating here. But I feel that that's the audience. The audience is Ray essentially hugging Carrie Fisher. Yeah. And, you know, kind of saying mm -hmm. goodbye. But I, could, I have a feeling the scene will be more along the lines of Carrie Fisher saying, look, like, I've done what I can. It's all up to you now. You yeah. Like, you know, good luck, Ray. Hug. Yeah. Uh, from there, it's the whole crew on uh, some kind of grassy world. Uh, it might be the same world we've been talking about, Endor or Yavin. Uh, C-3PO, Chewbacca. BB-8 and BB-8's little droid friend who's been in some of the leaked promotional materials. He's like tiny. Apparently he's like a nuisance to BB-8. And then Poe and Finn again. Not really much to go off there. Yeah. Then we have them. Now this is the big one. This is the really big kind of reveal from the trailer. They are looking at the wreckage of the Death Star. Basically like in an ocean. Uh, we've been mentioning it now throughout this breakdown. Whether we think this is Yavin or Endor, which Death Star are they looking at? Uh, Sean, what do you think of him? If it is the second Death Star, it would make sense if it were on Endor, like we were talking about a little bit ago. Um, you know, spoiler alert, Palpatine comes back at the end of this trailer uh, with a voiceover. Um, so if this is the second Death Star and part of his essence or spirit or force ghost or will the whatever you want to call it is trapped in that part of the wreckage you know that could have created a new you know hot spot like a like the cave in dagobah you know the sith cave or whatever yeah and, and yavin was also a very right. big hot spot so for, it would make yeah. a lot of sense if it were endor specifically for that reason no that's actually he, you know he just put the he just put the good an idea in my head of like why can't Palpatine be like a Force ghost or something like that? Like, given his immense power, you think that Kylo Ren would want to seek him out? Yeah, and be like, hey, I need to know how to be powerful like you. 
Um, I, I, I want to, that'll kind of be where we, we, we end this breakdown. I'll, we'll get to Palpatine in a little bit uh, here. Oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. I lied. We are at the end of the trailer. So at the very end of the trailer, we hear Palpatine's very ominous and very famous cackle. Yeah. What I'm thinking here, Matt Smith has been cast in this movie. Now, Matt Smith is a very unique actor. Obviously, Doctor Who, um, he, the rumor was early on he was cast as some kind of Imperial. I think it's a load of shit. I think that Matt Smith is coming back as the cloned emperor. It is the perfect role for him. Matt Smith can play that kind of like weird, eerie, you know, I, I think he's I think he's a great character actor. He kind of could pull off a young Ian McDermott. Um the the force laugh could be from a force ghost. I mean Palpatine's laugh could be from a force ghost. Um what do you guys think? Yeah, there's a lot of different branches to go off of in this. Yeah, is he a force ghost? Is he a clone? Um or did was the original Palpatine a clone and the Palpatine that shows up in this movie is the real one. Uh, they're, you know, they're, they had all the clone stuff in the, you know, the old EU books that they're, you know, using to draw inspiration off of. Uh, but it's really, really going to be interesting to see just how they bring him back and explain away whether he was actually killed and comes back or, you know, if he was a clone all along or whatever they want to do with it. It's interesting because we actually don't see him die yeah you just see him get thrown down down there there but you never flash a light and that's it (laughs) i I choose one of my favorite darth maul came back exactly one of my (laughs) one of my favorite comedy moments you ever watch the show robot chicken they and they did they did a star wars special years ago and one of the things that they did was when palpatine gets thrown down the shaft he falls and hits the Millennium Falcon's <laughs> windshields or drive like, what the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty amazing. I choose to believe that's what happened. They just never showed it in Return of the Jedi. Or, Matt, you brought up uh, Darth Plagueis a little bit ago. Uh, I did see a theory floating out there that Palpatine is actually Darth Plagueis in dis- uh, disguise. He's been him all along. He learned how to cheat death and has been uh, taking over different bodies throughout the you know, his time. I mean, like the, the thing is though, is that having a physical Palpatine, whether it be cloning or, you know, I mean, force ghosts, you can make that work because we force ghosts are established in this universe. Uh, but the thing is, is that to me, that would require a lot of explanation and setup for Palpatine. Yeah. And to me, that would take away from the story of Ray and Kylo. Well, and especially if you're trying to wrap up a saga. Yes. Too. Um, who knows? It's exciting either way. I think Palpatine is just as big a, a major, you know, plot point and character as Luke and Leia and Han. Uh, to have him in what is going to be the final finale of of this saga is cool. With ever iteration they they choose to go, and I guess that's what I want to end this sp- uh, specific segment with. Do you guys think that this is really the definitive end of the Skywalker saga? These nine films. I think it is because you have. Uh... Dan and Dave from Game of Thrones doing the new trilogy coming up. They did announce that after episode nine, they're going to go on a couple year hiatus and not make any new feature films, which is great. Um, So I think with the new trilogy that is going to come out, it's time to put the past to bed. Like Kylo says in episode seven, let the past die, die. you know, give us new characters, new stories, new planets, and don't be bumping into everybody that you've already seen throughout such an entire universe that you could possibly be in. You've always bumped into people, you know, let's, let's cut ties a little bit and do some into those dudes from, uh, (laughs) sorry, the first star Wars movie. Like he doesn't like you. Oh, (laughs) I don't like you either. They (laughs) escape freaking Jetta. I am. Pando Baba. Oh my (laughs) God. I mean, it makes sense why they'd be at a bar after escaping that. Yeah. But I mean, you know, you think you want to lay low, but whatever. But no, I I also agree that this is the end of the of the whole thing with the Skywalkers because these nine movies are essentially the Skywalkers and what they've done to impact the galaxy. And obviously, it's kind of become Ray and Kylo's story with the new trilogy, which I'm totally fine with. But obviously, the impact of Luke and Leia and I guess Vader and even Palpatine like is obviously very keenly felt still in this new trilogy and I'm of the opinion of even if like, let's say somewhere in the back of Bob Iger, whoever's responsible for that at Disney's mind, 
they might go like, why don't we have like some separate Skywalker? No, just whatever. Get that out of your head right now. Yeah. Do not like once you're done with these movies, the Skywalkers are done. You're done with them. Don't touch well, I think them. There, there was an idea of like a Luke Skywalker spinoff. Please God, no. No, I, I think it got put down. Uh, no, a couple months ago, but yeah. I think that was one of them. Yeah, and I no one wants there. that, and no one needs and, that. And yeah. I was never so a fan. Have, yeah, and Star I, Wars story movie. Yeah, and I was never a fan of the idea of a standalone uh, Obi Wan movie or anything like that. See, I, I, that's the movie that I wanted. Now, listen, Solo came out, and I thought Solo was great. It was nothing special, but it was still great. No, but the thing was, is that the, great. like the thing with the thing, the thing with the Kenobi yeah, movie was, it. is that like when is it going? Is it going to be set when he's a, still a Jedi or when he's watching over Luke on Tatooine? Because if it's the latter, when he's on Tatooine, that's not as interesting. It is if you read, read, read the comics, because Obi Wan wasn't just like sitting in his in his shed like the whole time. I know, but the thing was though is, and I and I know we've talked about this in a previous episode a while back though, is that Star Wars Rebels kind of to me they ta- they wrapped up Obi Wan nicely when Maul shows up on Tatooine because he basically you know he used the Sith holocron and the uh, the Jedi holocron to basically find out his location because he just want all he could think about was getting vengeance on on Obi-Wan and when he shows up and finds Obi-Wan and he like kind of starts using the force and he goes no he goes you're not hiding you're protecting something and he just goes or someone and that's when Obi-Wan turns on his lightsaber and that's when you know shit just got real. What with a him. great scene that was! That I mean, no, that was a perfect scene. And as I said, I don't need a movie to build on that. What I love about that scene, uh, have you seen it? The Rebels episode where I've watched a little bit of Rebels. I didn't finish the series. Do you care about spoilers? No. I, okay. So basically, Maul finds Obi Wan mm-hmm. on Tatooine and goes to. I did watch Clone Wars. Y- yeah. So Maul goes to fight Obi-Wan and possibly kill him because Maul knows that there's something big that could possibly... He, he he knows that this one, he assumes that it's the Chosen One that can unite the Force. And Obi-Wan, in a nutshell, makes very quick work yeah. of Maul. Just just wrecks him. Just like, it's not even a fight. No, it's, it's not a fight. But what I thought Spider was, legs didn't help out. No, <laughs> not one bit. What I thought was so captivating about that scene is as Maul's dying, in Obi-Wan's arms, not, he didn't just let him die, like, he was very, like, passionate. And... I believe the lines go something like this: "Like Maul asks, is 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 it is he the chosen one?" And and he doesn't ask like in anger. He asks like as a force user, as someone who maybe actually cares. And as he's dying, and Obi Wan goes like, something along the lines like, "I do believe I, he is." Yes, and I, it's I, just like this great. Moment. And I I think he actually I, I I could be wrong, but I think Maul also says like, "Will he avenge us?" Oh well. And or then, will he and, unite and he, something like, like that? Yeah, he says something along those lines, and, and Obi-Wan's like, yeah, I think he will. Yeah. It, and then, just... and then like, after he dies, like, Obi-Wan kind of looks... You see he's finally looking towards Luke's farm, and you hear Aunt Beru go, Luke, and you see yeah. this... You can tell it's a kid just yeah. go running back to the farm, and he just kind of stroking his chin. As I said, that was a perfect scene. Like, I don't need an Obi-Wan movie, mm. but I'm kind of getting... We're getting off topic, but... Um, let's let's move on to uh, our, our next segment here, which is going... Sticking with Star Wars and sticking with... Uh, what has been dubbed the, the sequel trilogy to the um, the original trilogy here. Um, the the first big question here is, do you think that J.J. Abrams should have just directed all three? Do you think adding in Ryan Johnson was a mistake? or Because episode nine was supposed to be directed by uh, the guy who, Colin, Colin uh, Trevorrow. Trevorrow, and he got fired um, <laughs> because... Uh, for Did multiple you see Jurassic reasons. World, it was no, no. He got fired for like an indie film he was made it? that there, there was supposed a, there to were... be a big deal, and it completely shit the bed. Yeah. Nobody, nobody liked Ray, and nobody with liked Megarex. the guy anyway. So Kathleen Kennedy was just like, "Bye, Felicia. Yeah, see you later." So, what do you think, JJ? The whole trilogy or no? Uh, in retrospect, yeah, uh, I understand that the, you want to bring in fresh directors all the time to you know keep the stories fresh and not have that kind of stale factor going on. I mean, you look at the original trilogy, George directed the first one, and then that was it until the prequels. You saw what he did with the prequels, and he directed all three of them himself. So I understand trying to bring in new directors for each movie. Certainly did not pan out for the way that J.J. started it in Episode 7 from what Ryan Johnson bastardized it into for Episode 8. So now J.J.'s going to have to go back and undo a lot of the things that Ryan Johnson did to get back to the vision that he set forth when he started, you know, the new trilogy and kind of get it to where he needs it to get to again. Plus put a whole another movie on top of that too. So he's got a tall order ahead of him. My, my feeling is, is that JJ didn't need to direct. However, what was 
absolutely needed, which I don't think happened at all, is somebody overseeing all three movies and said, this is what we're going to do in each movie. This is where the story is going to start. This is where it's going to end. This is some of the beats it's, it needs to hit in the middle. Because, yes, George Lucas directed the first Star Wars, and he didn't direct you know any, any of the later but two. But it was his vision. But it was his vision. He oversaw the movie. Like, he... It wasn't. I don't think it was Irving Kirshner. I think was the director of Empire. Yep. I, it wasn't his decision to say Vader's now Luke's father. Just that's happening, yeah. George. Like I'm totally because George comes down and says this is what needs to happen in this scene. Yeah, I mean, you for make, all intents and purposes, yeah. You make the scene. Them, you make the scene. However, you want to make it. How you want to film it. Shoot it. What blah 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 blah. But I there needed to be either one or maybe a handful tops of people that oversaw the story and already had it planned out. You can you couldn't write it on the fly. Yeah, because nobody. I mean, there's lots of stories out there about George as a director on those movies, and he no, nobody wanted to tell him no. Nobody yeah. wanted to tell him that that idea was bad. So he, you know, he didn't get away with it in the prequels because he directed them. He made every decision and got away with murder. <laughs> whereas you know the original trilogy with Empire and Jedi, you know, he did have other people in place that were kind of you know acting as checks and balances as to what he was maybe putting out there and yeah. what actually got put on screen. So, um, yeah, just, it's, wanna, it's a big difference. Yeah. I, I want to start with this by saying that I, I enjoyed immensely. I, I, I am a last Jedi fan. I will agree with Matt and say that, and I, I used to believe this. I don't believe it anymore. I did believe that there was someone overseeing the children. There wasn't, I think that they didn't do George Lucas a solid by kind of like casting him to the side. I don't think they necessarily needed to go with his original thought for the sequel trilogy, but to say, hey, George, this is what we want to do. Do you want to consult on these and do you want to kind of oversee it and let these people direct? I think that this trilogy sorely did need that, like Matt said. Um, I wouldn't mind if J.J. directed all three, but I think George Lucas... This is still his baby and a story that he did want to see out in some way. Yeah, yeah but it's not his baby anymore, though, because he sold it. He, <laughs> true. But, you know, he did some stuff for Solo, which was cool. And apparently he had a lot to do with Episode Nine. And the one thing I'll say uh, that I loved about this trailer was that it immediately felt like Star Wars, which even though I enjoyed and I, I did love Last Jedi, the trailers and the movie itself didn't feel like Star Wars necessarily. Um, where See, I thought this... the trailer for episode eight did. Actually, well, that, maybe the, the the trailer did. The trailer did. The yeah. movie didn't. <laughs> um, but the movie was just something very new, and obviously there's been there's such a huge divide. Um, well, you, you had... one thing. One thing I will and I'll I'll sidebar slightly is yes, this movie like we're going to say goodbye to Carrie Fisher and somebody else we're saying goodbye to not because is John Williams. Oh my yeah. god, John Williams' his final movie. movie. He will be sco- composing, scoring. So I had the honor and the privilege um, last year, actually a year ago, like in a couple of days. Yeah. Uh, to go see John Williams conduct the Philadelphia Orchestra. Yeah, and but... it was awesome. Yeah, but but. Uh, like as I said, like it's, I my my personal feeling about the the sequel trilogy at this point is, there's no way they're gonna conclude it in a satisfying way. There's too much crap that's floating around with like the various with the way the force works with Ray and Kylo and now oh we might introduce the we're gonna bring back Palpatine and all that stuff. Like I feel that it's going to be rushed. I'm probably going to enjoy it. But it's going to be rushed, and basically, the my hierarchy of Star Wars trilogies is going to go original, sequel, prequel. That's probably where I'm going Matt, to Matt, let me ask you a question. So, yeah. if Episode Eight played out a lot differently to where you could have started setting up things for this movie in Episode Eight, you know, maybe with Palpatine or some of those other things that we're seeing in the trailer now, you know, if you could already could have laid the groundwork for that instead of having a 20 minute canto bite sequence that yeah. added nothing to the movie whatsoever. Um, do you think that would have been a lot more satisfying yeah, for I mean, that movie and I mean, I th- make th- episode <laughs> nine easier to manage because you don't have to set up so much in a short amount of time? I, th- I think, I mean, we're kind of getting into a topic that we're going to well, get no, into. Well, no, let's, I bit. mean, let's get into it. But we're, we ta- talking but last, we're, we're basically, talk Jedi and I mean, I liked Last Jedi. I didn't love it. It had a lot of problems, and I've had problems with the sequel trilogy in terms of how the characters act, in terms of, because 
the thing, like, for example, like just comparing, say, Ray and Luke and not and like and let me I'm just going to get this out of the way. I have zero problems with Ray being a woman, with Finn being black, with any kind of Kelly Marie Tran. Yeah, yeah. I, I have zero problems. However, the characters like for like Luke, for example, in the original trilogy, he was a farm boy. So there's a reason for him to be this optimistic, idealistic. You know, he was raised by his aunt and uncle on a farm. He's, you know, that milk fed, like, don't know no better. He's just a good old homeboy who wants to do right. Ray grew up by herself in the rough and tumble life, fought, fended for herself. Why is Ray like this kind of like she's not happy go lucky, but Ray should be a little gruffer, in my opinion. She should be a little more standoffish from people. Finn, for example, was brainwashed and uh, essentially abused and tortured, but he's the comic relief in the sequel trilogy. Like he should have, he essentially should have PTSD and that would be interesting to kind of have, because the, his fights with phasma should but have Star a lot. Wars never more... really touches on those kind of things. No, I know. And I get that. Not but the, the thing films, was, yeah, the, 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 the books. No, the, yeah, I understand books, that. But the thing yeah. was, is that like, for example, his fights with phasma should have far more emotion in them than well, they do. Well, it's not like we all agree on 100% is that phasma has been a complete waste of talent. Yeah. And character in all Gwendolyn of Christie. And I mean, like a tremendous actress, they wasted her. I you mean, know. let, let's officially talk about this because last, just a toy sale. Yeah. Last Jedi <laughs> is just so it's, it's, it's in controversy. Yeah, it, it has it has problems. It's it's literally. I believe may, maybe people will disagree with me that it's split down the fifty. Fifty percent of people love it, and fifty percent of people hate it. There's no. I'm, I'm in the middle. I don't love it. I you're, don't hate. You're it. like one of like the rare people that's in the middle because I, what I've noticed is that it's either like love or hate. The, like like one of my. I like, think it's more bad than good. I don't think it's altogether terrible. Um, there's some redeeming qualities about it. Um, I, if I had to call it a bad movie or a good movie, you know, one or the other, I would have to lean toward the bad side. Unfortunately, my my feeling about it is I'll give it slightly good because it has some ideas that I really like. I love the fact that Ray is a nobody. I cannot tell you how happy I am. She's not a solo. She's not a Skywalker. Because basically, and I, I call it, I, and I, I don't know if I've ever talked about it on an episode, but there's a book series from a long time ago called uh, The Magician Series, written by an author by the name of Raymond E. Feist. One of my favorite exchanges between two characters in any work of fiction happens in one of the later books, where this magician, his name is Pug, basically he grows up as an orphan and he becomes the most powerful magic user in the entire world, so on and so forth. And he has this talk with another magician and Pug basically kind of says, like, I'm probably like the child of destiny or something. And this character says to Pug, he goes, no, you're the you're the one night liaison between a traveling soldier and a barmaid. He goes, there's nothing special about you. And he goes, we don't have to be the children of destiny to do something great. And I like and I love that. I love the fact that you don't have to be a bloodline to be special or powerful or amazing or anything like that. Raise a nobody. Great, and that's that's the question I want to ask here. Um, there's there's all these fanboys and people saying, "Well, raise raise a Mary Sue." Did she get the Captain Marvel treatment? Saying, "Well, oh, you know, Captain Marvel's like, you know, she was just going like ships, like no problem." Like Captain Marvel's a Mary Sue, raise a Mary Sue. Is is there is that fair at all? Um, I think so. It's slightly not because of. I don't think it has anything to do with the, the fact that it's just a female main character having these powers and abilities. I think it's more so in the writing of the character specifically and not explaining, you know, how she, you know, knew she had power, like anything like that or anything of her backstory, just because she's so not well written as a character. I think it makes it less credible when you see her just all instantaneously develop force powers that she didn't know she could do in mid battle against Kylo in the first, you know, episode seven and hold her own against him and basically take him down Look, when he's argue, been, he did have a wound like in, the gut, in a to fight like going on and you have some kind of talent and she does know how to fight that you, she was just going straight off of like, what is the equivalent of like a force adrenaline rush? I mean, I guess that's possible. And if she is as powerful as she's seeming to be, I mean, it could be, you know, the force just came through her and, you know, led her to do everything, which is Because the force has been known to, I mean, they say it a lot, like it works in very mysterious ways. And like, it's, to me, it's like the, one of my issues with the, like, I don't call Ray a Mary Sue, but there are times where I'm kind of like, she, like, how does she know how to do all this? Yeah. Like, where is this coming from? Like the thing with the original trilogy is that the passage of time is never really explained. And, and it's like it's 
it's assumed that Luke could be training with Yoda for days, for weeks, for months. We don't know. Like, I don't, I don't really know. And obviously there's also the passage of time in between the movies where it's quite obvious, like the, how long it took to make the movies is roughly how long in between each movie it is in the original trilogy. In the sequel trilogy, it seems like Ray's on that planet with Luke for a few days, and and then Yoda appears and like, oh, she she already has everything that she needs to do what she needs to do, ignoring the fact that the whole reason the Jedi even existed in the first place was that it's not a good thing when somebody just starts getting Force powers because they don't know how to use them, and inevitably they're probably going to start going towards the bad with it. Because if I'm able to like crush a car with just my mind, I probably might start finding people I didn't like and yeah. taking it out on them. Like, do we realize that in the original trilogy, Luke really didn't do anything with no, the Force? No, he barely used the Force. In the <laughs> no, movie, he, yeah. like, he, he couldn't do anything. Yeah, like, and even he, when he's in the Rancor pit, like, he couldn't have used the Force. He, did, he threw a rock. <laughs> like, take on, that! Man. <laughs> um, before we get into a couple more questions here, your secret code word for winning Spider-Man Homecoming is gauntlet. Mm. Again, it's gauntlet. So first person email us with our code word to win a digital copy of Spider-Man Homecoming. We'll uh, get that digital code. Um, kind of talked about some of our issues with, with Last Jedi. Um, is what are, what are you, I guess, before we get into our next question, what are your, what's your biggest issue with, with Last Jedi? Um... Uh... I think it was just very boring of a film. I, I mean, there wasn't a lot of big action set pieces uh, that mattered. Uh, the, the end scene, yeah, you know, the end battle you know, on crate was a waste of time with Rose not letting Finn sacrifice <laughs> himself. Like, love is how we're gonna win this. And then, I mean, it would have been great to see Luke and IRL. Uh, you know, taking on Kylo, you know, not a, you know, force projection or astral projection, whatever you want to call it. And then just to see him go out the way that he did, uh, I would at least like to see him stick around in actual physical form throughout the trilogy until the end of episode yeah. nine. My, my feeling, I, I have many similar complaints that, that he has in terms of like the, for example, the battle, the final battle on crate with all the, you know, it's, it's salt, you know, whatever. <laughs> Like oh, when they, diamond fox. when Poe Dameron and them go flying out in their ships, do they have any guns on those ships whatsoever? I do you ever see I, them no. shoot? The answer is no. I actually went back and watched a good chunk of that scene. I'm like, to they're not fair, shooting. I mean, be, they were getting picked off so quick. Yeah, never had, what like, the you know, hell was their? What, yeah, what, what were they doing? Do? <laughs> what were they doing? Fly into them? Like the that'd universe? be like I mean, that'd be like. I mean, like imagine. Like, imagine, like, like any other point in history where dudes with guns and tanks show up and it's like, we're going to rush them. Like, all right, what are we going to shoot them with? Nothing. We're just going to try and, like, just fly around and hope for the best, man. Like, it's Braveheart, but, like, if the Scottish <laughs> didn't have any they weapons. Have any <laughs> they just ran at them. <laughs> like, yeah! Let me, let, but, me, let, me put, let me put this by you guys, because... You talk. You talked about not not many action sequences. You talking about like, did they have any weapons? Well, okay, it's not enough. not even just that. But There's more than that. But here's the deal. Where's the lightsaber battles? There is, and Come em, Empire Strikes Back. Besides the battle of uh, of uh, shit, Bes Hoth. Hoth. I said best when I was the battle of Go Hoth. To hell for I'm not knowing that. How dare you? Besides the battle of Hoth, you know, again, not too much action in that movie. You had the lightsaber fight at the end. But, um, it, it is a setup to Return of the Jedi, and I I read about it a lot after Last Jedi came out. Empire back in the '80s was not well received until the whole kind of story was wrapped up. So I want to ask the question: Can Episode Nine end up making Last Jedi a great film? I'm gonna say no because a film is a good film because it was a good film, not because another movie is Empire made it great better. though without its other movies. Yeah, I think so. Like, like if I never saw Return of the Jedi and just watched but, Empire, but we had, I could think it's a good movie. I, I mean, you're you're my age. You're a little bit older than yeah. me. Like we're all lucky in the fact that we got to watch these movies all together. We're going into the secret trilogy brand new, like not knowing anything. I think that makes a difference. Well, let me ask you this: Does Avengers make Iron Man two a better movie? I think Iron Man two is the best of the Iron Man films. Oh, that's well, not well, saying much. Yeah, to be fair. <laughs> I, I thought Iron Man three was weak. I thought Iron Man one did a very good job of being what it was supposed to be to set up these movies. I thought Iron Man two gets shit on way too much. But the thing, the thing is, though, is that how about this? Then does does Last Jedi make Force Awakens an amazing movie? I I mean, Force Awakens is good. I think Last Jedi was better than Force Awakens. But the thing, but the thing with Empire, and yeah, people might have poo-pooed it because it didn't have that 
awesome, amazing action that they were used to from you know the first movie with the whole death because the Death Star run. But the thing is that some of the most quoted moments from of the original trilogy come from Empire. Do or do not. There is no okay, try. That, that is a very those good quiet, point. introspective moments where you build the characters up, and then because that way, when the action scenes happen, we care about them. Like, I mean, one of my favorite moments from the original trilogy is from Return of the Jedi when Vader discovers that Luke and Leia are brother and sister. And when Luke completely flips the freak out on him, the music and the fact that I care about the Luke character because of the buildup of him in Empire, you know, it it made him that much better. The problem was, is that uh, Last Jedi didn't build the characters that well like it added a little bit to Rey. as i said i like the fact that she's a nobody i'm cool with that i'm really hoping they don't wreck on that for now yeah <laughs> i'm really hoping they don't wreck on that i'm really hoping that like palpatine's force goes is and like ray i'm your father <laughs> like i'm hoping that doesn't happen but it's like and as i said or like, is ray I, a palpatine clone <laughs> and and that's something i really hope does not happen yeah i just i pray to god but I mean, the the thing was, I don't feel as attached to these. Like Ray is Ray and Kylo Ren are the only two characters I feel any kind of attack. I love Kylo Ren. To me, he's probably the best part of the sequel trilogy. And I, I'll give you that too. Besides Ray and Kylo, yeah, like, um, fi- like yeah, I mean, if any of the other ones went away, would you really care or miss them? Maybe yeah. Poe. I like Poe. You could, but you could cut like you could cut the whole scene with Finn and Rose on Cantabite from the Last Jedi, and it does nothing to the main story. It, no, I, it would have made the main story better. <laughs> like I, I, I agree. And that's with that. ultimately and that, their mission meant absolutely yeah, nothing. And, and to that's the entire and I know movie. That, and I know a lot of dudes who are who I and I've watched a lot of reviews from guys who were like are like, oh, I don't like them because you know I didn't like the Voldo character because of her purple hair and shit. Like you cannot like the Voldo character. Like how she went out was awesome. I loved it. It was it was cool. It's one have, of the coolest scenes in a Star however, Wars However, but the thing was ever. is that like, and this has been pointed out by numerous people, is that why at no point did Voldo just say to Poe, like, look, dude, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to evacuate under cloak transport to that nearby planet, and they're going to go right by us and just ignore us. But instead, she tries to play this whole like game of like, oh, you just follow orders, Poe. Like I just tell you what to do, and you, like. Like, there's, like, about 300 of you left at this point. Like, why not just say, like, Poe, this is what we're doing, man. Like, this is the plan. This yeah. is what's going on. Do you on. think it was the writing of the character to be, like, a strong, authoritative woman? I, I don't, like, once again, like, when some guys, like, delve into, when some reviewers delve into that, they kind of come off sounding like they they're, they don't like her just because she's a female admiral with purple hair, which I've more than, more than, I've seen more than a few, like, refer, like, hate Voldo yeah. or Rose just because, and, like, they give reasons, but they don't sound very honest to me. Like, I didn't, I wasn't a fan of the Rose character because that whole scene when she smashes into Finn's ship and everything, and she's like, oh, love is how we're going to win this. Like, the, the giant laser behind you is about to blow I open. I like Voldo, the- <laughs> Voldo more than I liked Rose. Like, I mean, and I didn't notice there was no mention or view of Rose in the new trailer, which that's a really interesting fact, actually. Because part of me wonders, will Rose be in the new be in the movie? Will she will she have like a a bit role and be like, all right, Rose is going to go off and oversee victim of some nasty, like sexist, racist shit. If if you if you if you were one of those people that like, you know, that went after her and, you know, called her a bitch, a slut, whatever like that, you're a piece of shit. And I have zero problem saying that. If you hated her just because she's a woman, because she's Asian, because she's whatever, you're a piece of shit, and I don't want you in Star Wars fandom because you make it toxic for everybody. But if you can legitimately cite reasons within the movie of, like, why the Rose character just kind of made you go, huh? Yeah. Like... Then I'm I'm okay with that. Like, cause the one thing I wish that they did with with um, Valdo or however you pronounce her name, it's it Holdo. Was, yeah, there you go. I wish that they had like expanded on like not so much like be like oh Poe you need followers like expand on her relationship with Leia, which obviously was something bigger than they had time to yeah. to talk about because like dude she had like one of the best endings to a character ever who was barely built up as a character in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the the whole scene with the star destroyers was freaking mind blowing. Um, so speaking of not having time to build up, we talked about maybe episode eight making episode nine or episode nine making episode eight better, which I guess you guys don't necessarily agree with, Mm -hmm. um, from episode eight going into nine, how much is JJ going to carry over? How much is he going to wreck on? That's, that's a really good question. I feel like there's probably going to be a, a number of things that he does change, you know, whether it 
is revealing Ray's real parentage. Um, you know, there's just going to be a lot that I feel like he really didn't appreciate that Ryan kind of, you know, differentiated himself from with episode seven. Um, so I think he is, unfortunately, he's going to have to spend a lot of time making changes and retconning some things. And ultimately it's going to take away from what could have been a better film if you know, things were more streamlined through the process of, you know, developing the trilogy's story. Um, so hopefully it doesn't take too much away from it, but I do feel like there's going to be a lot of changes. I, I also feel <laughs> that he's going to drop a bunch of stuff. Um, one thing that I, I kind of hope that they carry over is the idea of like the Jedi and Sith are like, they're, they're old, they're done. Like we need to do something new, you know, maybe kind of straddle both, you know, straddle bo- both light and That's dark. That's where that in terms Skywalker of, title could yeah, come in. Oh, yeah. God, I, please don't call him Skywalker, <laughs> please. <laughs> I mean, just I I feel like, you know, yes, he's going to have to retcon quite a few things in terms of, you know, that like what I mean, like it would take me too long to kind of break down what he should carry over from Last Jedi versus what shouldn't be carried over. I mean, we've literally already talked about the possibility of the Rose character might not even show be, up, barely yeah. be in there like that. She might have a cursory appearance. So, and that's essentially Finn's love interest. I want to know about the broom kid. Yeah, yeah, where's the dude, broom kid a, at? He's a force user. Yeah, where's the broom boy? <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's something. I mean, like, All right, here's it? a fun theory. The broom kid is actually the main character of the new Star Wars video game coming out, Grown Up. How's that? Boom. Nah. No, because that's nah. um, that's right after Order 66. Yep. Ah, shit. He's, a, he's right. a Jedi yeah. Padawan Damn. who escaped yep. Order 66. Never mind. That would be Throw cool, that one though. out the window. But if, yeah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Palpatine is actually Broom Kid. Green uh, he's the clone. Yeah, that's him. Give he's me the, the broom. I have to sweep the yard. Do it. I could do probably another two hours of of talking about Star Wars. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to talk about Star Trek next. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I just watch. Hey, very briefly, I just watched my least favorite episode of Star Trek Discovery. So there's that. Hmm. Uh, I'll talk about that after we're done. We are done for for this episode. Uh, please, you know, watch the episode 9 trailer. want to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, just for note, we will not be back with a new episode next week. It is Passover and Easter, so happy both of those holidays to those who celebrate. We will be back the week after. Uh, this has been episode 17. Sean, thank you for joining yeah, us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Again, and uh, you guys have a good night. To the moon, by plane, to the rocket, by taxi, to the airport, by front door, to the